Let's start today's video with this beautiful picture captured by one of the astronauts on the International Space Station. This was captured by Sergei Korsakov and appears to be frost work formed by some kind of a water droplet on the outside of the window. And naturally because this is in outer space, the frost work looks just a little bit different. But there is actually something really intriguing about this image when it comes to water crystals based on what we know about water outside of planet Earth. Current scientific understanding of water ice in the vastness of cosmos suggests that it's usually very different from what we find on the surface of our planet. Specifically, it doesn't actually form crystals and is usually very disordered, resembling similar structure to what we find inside glass. And we call this an amorphous solid. Any material that lacks any long-range ordered atomic structure, typical to a crystalline structure we find inside diamonds and of course ice. And here is a very basic comparison of a typical crystalline structure to a typical amorphous solid. There is no long-range regularity, no repetition or patterns, and the spacing between atoms varies quite a lot. And so when we find water in our space, it was always imagined as this very disordered material containing a lot of jumbled molecules, fundamentally distinct from nearly ordered crystalline ice familiar to us right here on Earth. And that actually includes every single comet out there, every single moon and every single dwarf planet that contains ice, and of course all of the water we discover outside of the solar system. But this perception was primarily based on the extreme cold of space, which was always presumed to prevent water molecules from gaining sufficient energy to form these organized crystal structures. However, recent research seems to suggest something entirely different and may once again shift our understanding of water crystals and water in outer space. And so let's discuss this new study by Michael Benedict Davies and the team you see right here that discovers something new about the amorphous ice by recreating it right here on Earth. Although before I start, I wanted to briefly mention something I've talked about in some of the previous videos in the description. When it comes to water forming solids, it's not just these two types. It's not just ice and it's not just an amorphous solid. Solid water has a lot of different phases and can exist in at least 20 different solid phases depending on the temperature and the pressure, with extremely different properties and even different appearance. And we've actually discussed one of the most recent discoveries of a new phase of ice in 2024. You can find that video in the description. And though to us the most common type of ice is ice 1H, also known as hexagonal crystalline ice, most other planets contain something very different, usually cubic ice and various high pressure forms of ice such as ice 2, 3, 5, 6, 7 and so on with every single form containing different properties, different density, very different crystal structure, and most importantly, very different behavior. For example, some of these super high pressure ices are much denser than liquid water, and so they actually sink, unlike ice 1H or the hexagonal ice, which as you know from the oceans on our planet, tends to float. And here is a rough representation of all of these different phases in one single picture. But today we're mostly talking about the most abundant type of ice in outer space, or actually I guess the entire universe, amorphous ice. Ice that's supposed to only form in outer space on extremely cold objects that just do not have any pressure or do not contain enough energy to produce anything else. And yeah, let me repeat this again. This is the most common type of ice, or I guess water, in the entire universe. So when you hear about someone finding water somewhere out there, in some kind of a nebula or around some kind of a black hole, this is the type of water they usually discuss. But this new study challenges our previous assumption that this ice is completely disordered. Here this discovery dramatically refines our atomic level understanding of cosmic ice and has a lot of implications for a range of scientific disciplines in various fields of astronomy, for example planetary formation, or even ongoing search for extraterrestrial life that of course relies on the discovery of water. And so the specific type of ice we're discussing is technically known as LDA, low density amorphous ice, and it looks and behaves just like glass. It's usually found on comets, icy moons, and in a lot of different dust and gas forming regions in various nebula, and is also the type of ice we usually find in various protoplanetary disks with active planetary formation. And so in this recent study, scientists tried to recreate this right here on Earth. And specifically by using a combination of sophisticated computer simulations and experimental laboratory work. And so first of all, in their simulations, they froze virtual volumes of water 
by cooling them down to minus 120 degrees Celsius. But they did this at different rates. And the initial discovery here was that the best matches in this experiment were not really matching X-ray diffraction studies of actual LDA ice observed in real life. Which basically implied that the simulations were producing truly amorphous ice, but the real ice was maybe a little bit more orderly. And that suggested that it possibly contains tiny crystals embedded within its disorderly structures. And according to that first analysis, these microscopic crystals were found to be approximately 3 nanometers wide, just a little bit larger than a single strand of the DNA molecule, with the most accurate match coming from the simulated ice that contained 20% crystalline and 80% amorphous solid water. So essentially it was approximately 20% orderly, 80% disorganized. But this was just a simulation and this had to be validated which required an experiment. And so here they decided to create real samples by depositing water vapor into an extremely cold surface, mimicking how ice forms on dust grains in interstellar clouds. With the second approach being the opposite, warming up high density amorphous ice, which was ice crushed at extremely cold temperatures. And when they gently heated these amorphous ice samples, providing them with enough energy to form crystals, they observed something really intriguing. The final crystal structure varied depending on how the original amorphous ice has been formed. And this is quite significant. It essentially suggests that if the ice was indeed truly amorphous, it would not retain any imprint or any memory of any of the earlier forms. And so the fact that the ice remembered its origin indicates the presence of these tiny crystalline structures. With the observations suggesting that these crystalline microstructures ranged from 20 to 65% of the entire ice structure, consistent with their simulations. And so this hybrid amorphous crystalline nature was almost certain in both computational and experimental results. But I guess the next question is, okay, so why is this important and what are the potential implications? Well, first of all, this is of course important in order to understand various cosmological processes, because once again this is the most common type of ice in the entire universe. As the lead author Dr. Michael Davis stated, ice plays a role in how planets form, how galaxies evolve, and the general movement of matter throughout the entire universe. And so by creating a much more accurate model of space ice, would create more accurate models of cosmic phenomena. Then we have some implications for the famous panspermia model. The idea that maybe life came from somewhere else and can potentially exist in outer space, transferring from planet to planet. And while the main point of the hypothesis is that it suggests that fundamental building blocks of life, such as simple amino acids, could be transported to our planet on, for example, ice comets, with low density amorphous ice serving as the space shuttle material. But here Davis points out that Partly crystalline structure would offer less available space for these molecules to become embedded, implying that the idea of the amorphous ice serving as the, once again, space shuttle, would now be much more difficult to explain. And though this obviously does not invalidate panspermia completely, it just makes it a lot more difficult to prove. And so just to rephrase this, because space ice has less amorphous space and a lot more crystalline space, it would just make it much more difficult for various life molecules to survive inside of it. But beyond astronomy, these findings also raise much broader questions about various amorphous materials in general, especially because one day this could potentially have critical applications in various advanced technologies. For example, when it comes to glass fibers that we use to transport data over long distances, the assumption was always that they were perfectly amorphous, which was required for them to transport information without the loss of data. But if glass fibers also contain tiny undetected crystals, and we never knew they existed, by identifying and removing these crystals, we can actually dramatically improve the efficiency of data transfer. And so this research potentially has some physical applications to modern life, especially when it comes to the modern internet. And last but not least, it also has some application in cryogenic electron microscopy. Here, when it comes to advanced microscopes that often rely on very cold conditions, and when it comes to preserving things in extremely cold conditions as well, truly amorphous ice is desired to avoid damage and to improve resolution of the microscope. With this study implying that some of the cryopreservation techniques and a lot of cryomicroscopy can definitely improve if we use truly amorphous ice. But I guess that's the bigger question. The implications from the study suggest that truly amorphous ice may not even exist. Or at least it may not exist in nature. 
making water molecules and water in general just a very, very strange element. Water's many anomalies and its behavior on Earth are of course the main reason life can even exist here, but it looks like even in outer space, water molecules still have a lot of different secrets and still act in a way we don't really expect it to act. But here it's once again important to note that ice on Earth is a cosmological curiosity. Crystalline ice or hexagonal ice only exists because our planet is relatively warm. And so seeing symmetrical snowflakes would be practically impossible anywhere outside of our planet. But the long-held view that the ice out there is completely disordered may have been just a little bit oversimplified. With this study opening new doors and helping us explain this fundamental molecule and its importance to life. But what's really intriguing here is that this is not the first groundbreaking discovery about water ice coming from this team. They actually did have a groundbreaking paper approximately two years ago. In 2023, they discovered something known as MDA, medium density amorphous ice. Ice that surprisingly has very similar density to liquid water, which means that it would not sink or float in the water, but just basically stay where it is. An ice that contained a unique property. When compressed, it released a substantial amount of heat, which is very different from other water ices that usually just revert to their normal form. Would that discovery potentially explain what happens in outer space as well? For example, we sometimes detect various types of quakes on various icy moons, such as Europa. And so here the speculation was that this unusual MDA ice could be responsible for some of these ice quakes when ice is squeezed inside Europa and releases a lot of heat. And because right now Europa is one of the primary targets for the search for extraterrestrial life, by trying to understand what sort of water exists there, we can then figure out if life is even possible. And so if this type of ice exists on Europa and a lot of other objects, it could represent an important internal energy source, influencing hydrothermal activity and the habitability of Europa's ocean. But as I mentioned in the beginning, there are a lot of different exotic types of ices and exotic phases of water that were discovered in the last few years. For example, not so long ago, in one of the videos in the description, we also discussed Ice 18, the super ionic water or super ionic ice that may exist in a lot of different planets out there, such as Uranus and Neptune. And in this phase, a lot of oxygen ions start to form crystalline structures, but hydrogen ions start to move inside the lattice, making the material superconductive. It essentially becomes metal. And this was created in a lab with its properties then confirmed sometimes in 2019. So basically, water is super weird, but can become even weirder in colder, hotter or pressurized conditions. And since it's the very foundation of life, we obviously have to understand all of this in order to figure out if life can exist elsewhere. With all of these new studies reminding us that the universe still hides so many secrets, even in things and substances that we take for granted. And that means that we'll come back and discuss more discoveries about water and water ice in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon where you can find more videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly, or maybe by joining the channel membership that grants you early access and a few more additional features, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.